Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode. I'm Ambaris, and today we're going to explore my uh, discoveries this week with Godot. So first of all, what is Godot? Godot is kind of a 2D, 3D game engine. It's open source, which means that if I have any issues, I can always check out the source and, you know, compile it myself, make modification and stuff like that. And it's made to be similar to uh, Unity or the likes. So I'm going to jump right into Godot and I'm going to try to show you a little bit of the, um, the quirks that I found the first time I uh, started a new project. So in Godot, uh, there's no concept of game entity or pre, uh, prefab or game object uh, like you'll find in other editor. In uh, Godot, you have basically two things. You have scenes and you have nodes. So I've started a new project here. Uh, it's empty. It has basically nothing. It No scenes, no nodes, no anything. And um, the first thing I noticed is uh, when you want to create something that in Unity would be like a game object, well, you have to go here and click the plus button and then you're met with a bunch of nodes and it's not exactly clear necessarily. I mean, you, you can figure out that uh, in node 2D you have sprites and uh, that's probably to render a sprite. But uh, it's not exactly clear what you should start with. And uh, one of the things I discovered is that uh, you can only have one root node. So the first time I uh, saw that, I got very confused because I didn't understand why I couldn't have more than one root node. The scenes are have this interesting particularity that they also... Um, double as prefabs. You create a scene and you include it in your other scenes and you can even have scenes that include scenes. For example, I have this empty scene here. I'm going to switch to 2D mode and uh, I'm going to save this scene as my main scene. So this is going to be the game. This is going to be where the game is going to start. And uh, right now it's empty. Let's just say that uh, I want to create uh, some kind of sprite in my scene. So I'll add this sprite. Uh, in the node 2D, there's these things called sprites, and uh, the sprites can have a texture. So I'll just load some kind of random texture. Of course, right now it's my whole sprite sheet, but uh, hopefully the sprite has an, uh, an attribute that you can activate to specify only a certain region of, of your sprite. And so then now I have a, a planet like this. But uh, let's say I want an object a little bit more complicated, so uh, maybe I want to add some label to it so I can you know, create a label and uh, I can uh, call it uh, planet one or something like that. And uh, I'll, uh, I'll align it like this. So now uh, what is cool is that when I move my object, because the label is a parent of the sprite, it's all going to move around. But uh, what if I want to create another uh, planet? So I could, I could just like duplicate my thing here and it's going to duplicate the whole hierarchy and uh, I can, oops, I can move it around and I have my second planet and I could go here and maybe change the label to planet two or something like that. But of course, ideally I'd want that to be some kind of prefab, right? In Unity or something like that, that's what I would do. In uh, Godot, you cannot have prefabs. There's no resource type called prefab. What you do instead is that you create a new scene and uh, you, put your, you put your sprite in there and you add your label and um, you, load, you, you set up everything like before. And uh, when you're done editing your prefab, uh, you have basically the same thing as you had before, but uh, now it's a separate scene. And when you save it, you can save it as like a sprite prefab, for example. And uh, you can go back into your main scene and instead of having this weird hierarchy of, of duplicate label, you click on this little button here and you link your prefab. And it looks identical to the other one, but what is cool is that I can have just as many as I want, just by reinstantiating the same scene multiple times. And if I go back into, into my original scene, for example, and uh, I change some information, and I call it just prefab, for example, I save this and then bam, all my instances were updated here. So you have to think in a hierarchy of level when you're developing in Godot. So this week I've been spending a lot of time on the UI and uh, I've been trying to develop scenes that are just like components 
for my UI and I can just instantiate all these components to create some kind of a layout for my buttons and my windows and my dialogues and stuff like that. So while I was figuring out the UI, uh, the other thing I had to figure out was uh, what kind of scripting the Godot engine uses. And uh, Godot uses a special kind of script language that's called GDScript. And uh, it supports also C Sharp, but uh, I looked on forum and when I started wanting to do C Sharp, it sounded like it wasn't that supported and that really you were better off with GDScript. Uh, the few things you ha I, not, I had to learn is, uh, well, first of all, you have this extend command. So uh, whenever you create a script, you can only attach one script to a node. And this script has to extend uh, the node you're uh, attaching to or a parent of that node. And then um, a couple of methods you have to figure out is, for example, the ready method for uh, initializing your stuff. And then you have the method uh, underscore process, which is the basically update method that's called every frame. But uh, I try really hard when I develop something not to use this because you never know when one of your node is gonna be instantiated like 50 million times in your scene. And if you have a process in there that's being called every frame, then it's gonna be called 50 million times for every single node instance you have in that scene. What I prefer to use is uh, events, and in Godot, they call them signals. I'm doing most of the communication through these signals. So you just declare your signal like that, and these are the pr parameters your signal ex expect. And then um, if you go in my level loader, for example, uh, you're gonna see that uh, I connect here to some uh, signal. Um, for example, this signal is on request object on load. Uh, that you can maybe see uh, here on request object on load. And um, what it does is it's going to call the method on request object on load callback on that object, which is itself. So another thing you can do is uh, trigger your events. So for example, when I create an object here, I'm going to call the emit signal and I'm going to uh, give it the name of the signal I want to emit, and I'm going to pass the parameters I want to pass to this uh, object. Anyone who's uh, connected to this event will receive this event. And uh, if you go here, you're going to see that I have uh, something called the unhandled input. And this is a method called by Godot engine to handle inputs that go right through and weren't catched by any UI element. There's three, three methods like that. So um, basically you have uh, input, which is going to be before everything else, and you will always receive input unless you've set the object, the node you're working with, as a should never receive input event. But uh, by default, input will always be fired. Then you have something called uh, GUI input, I think. And uh, this one is going to be fired only if you clicked on the object. So, um, and it's a control. It only works on controls. And then you have what they call the unhandled input. And the unhandled input is whatever input that uh, wasn't set as uh, stop in the base input, wasn't set as stop in the GUI input. And the thing is, is the GUI input will by default always set the input as process, so you'll never get the unhandled input. And I had a lot of trouble figuring out how to make it pass through. At first, I registered on the uh, underscore input event, and uh, what happened is, uh, well, let, let me just show you. So um, in my player, at first I was registering on the input event like this. So what happened is that when I handle the input event, it's handled before everything else, even before GUI actions. So even though I'm clicking on my log window, as you can see, my ship is moving around. And it's worse because if I click on like, for example, my weapon button, then the ship is gonna move, but it's also going to trigger the, uh, the, 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 the weapon. So how do you uh, make sure that your inputs are only trapped if there wasn't any GUI event? To do that, you let your buttons uh, be handled in the GUI event, like this, and um, you uh, use the unhandled input. And what the unhandled input does is that it'll be fired only if no GUI event was fired. 
My problem was that the the GUI event will be fired for anything that's a control. And I have a lot of controls here that I use to uh, shape the my buttons and group them together. So I have a, a bunch of uh, windows that I have a bunch of controls that actually take the whole screen. And uh, when I did that, well, they were catching all the events. And even if I'm not doing anything with them, just the fact that the control is there and catching the event will prevent the unhandled input from being uh, passed to the uh, rest of the game. And I really had a lot of trouble figuring out what to do with that. And uh, the solution I figured is that you have to go into your uh, windows and your controls that you don't want the mouse to be uh, enabled and you have to go into the mouse section and you have to put this which is by default to stop you have to put it on ignore and at first i was trying pass because i thought i want to pass the event but uh, when you put pass the the control is still uh, the, the unhandled event is is still not fired but if you put on ignore then the unhandled event will be fired and in that way when you start the game as you can see, what's going to happen is that I can still move by clicking in the empty space. But if I click on my windows here, they will not uh, pass the event to the rest of the game, which is exactly what I want. When I click on weapon now, my ship won't move. And that's just perfect. And today I'm not going to go into detail about what each of these do and uh, why I chose to create my uh, signals like that or why I have like a bunch of nodes here called in, in, a, in a node called behaviors. This is the architecture and uh, I wanted to do just an introduction to go that. I'm going to talk more in detail about the architecture I chose to go with uh, in my next episode. So uh, until then, see you guys and... Uh, Enjoy. If you want to see more of the code, don't hesitate to hit my GitHub page. Uh, it's all public again. I like to keep it open. So uh, go have a look and uh, tell me what you think.